All right, I had a patient of mine give me these two chunks of wood that have been made into cell phone, hold, cell phone holders. Can't say I've ever seen that before, but it's kind of a cool idea. She said, what can you do with these? I, I want them to be turned into some bowl or something. I said, well, let's see what I can do. I love artistic challenges like this. So I, I like using uh, pre-made tenons on my project so I don't have to cut it and waste a whole bunch of wood. One of these worked out beautifully and the other one not so much. So I decided to do, turn one of these into an epoxy project. Um, do some blue epoxy, kind of like a river table type thing. And the other one got a far less cool treatment. I have no idea what type of wood this is, neither did she. Uh, and I couldn't really tell if it had been um, stained or not. I think it was, but that stain soaked all the way through the wood, so kind of had a cool effect. Uh, it was certainly dry, it was not wet at all. It had been really well done. The, the pr first project was really cool, but um, the challenge was to get rid of that cell phone imprint without ruining the wood. And this specific one I decided to do with epoxy had some pretty deep cracks in it. And my thought here was that that there was enough holes going down into that big cell phone shaped divot that if I did it upside down, filled it full of epoxy, the air should escape and I should have a nice big blank to work with to turn into a, a bowl or a platter. Um, if you look really close right there, my tenon keeps shifting and I got it perfectly centered and then at some point it kept shifting. So you're gonna see that fun later. <laughs> Okay, so this is back to the other brother. Um, I just glued a previous tenon on the back and threw it on the lathe. Every time I see this piece, it reminds me of a T-bone steak or a skillet. It's kind of a funny shape. So I took a magic marker and just marked out exactly how big of a hole I have to make to get rid of that imprint and thankfully it gave me just enough room to be able to do it without getting off of the the edge of the woods so that was fortunate you'll notice across the top of the screen there's a plug for art for our.org um, I've been selling my own art and wood, woodworking projects for the last year and I've had pretty good success. We've raised about almost 10,000 bucks. Well, some really awesome volunteers over at OUR, especially uh, Nikki um, and Jennifer um, collaborated with me to help start a website called Art for OUR where any artist, woodworker, leather worker, painter, whatever, um, fiber works, quilts, you know, it doesn't really matter. Musicians, all are welcome to donate projects, big or small. Um, and they can choose whether 100% of the proceeds of the sale of their project down to 50% is donated, donated to Operation Underground Railroad. Um, anyway, we put it on our website. It's all categorized. We're trying to make the whole thing look nice. And we're going to start promoting it here pretty quick. But all the money raised uh, goes to Operation Underground Railroad. Right now our overhead is zero because we're all volunteering our time and paying for things out of our own pocket. So if you're a young artist or, or, or have a young career that is and you want to get things started, this might be a good way to get exposure. If you're well established and don't need that kind of help, we would love to collaborate with you and uh, see if we can't sell some of your great work to help benefit um, the fight against child sex trafficking. So come check out our website. We've had over 25 artists donate or promise to donate their stuff and there's more coming in almost every day. So we're hoping to become the Etsy of fundraising for Operation Underground Railroad more or less, uh, which would be awesome. We've got high goals, we'd love to get this thing going, and of course we're going to rely on the donations of a lot of very generous artists. Uh, we highlight the artists on there uh, forever, so their name will be there. You're, you can add your website and whatever to be linked in. Um, 
artist PF Ideas, how we can help the artists grow their their business as well as raise money. We are definitely open to ideas, um, but we'd love your support. So come check us out, art4our.org. So I am obviously an amateur woodturner epoxy artist. Somebody said, dude, have you ever heard of uh, a... <laughs> a scraper for the inside of your bowl and I was like oh what that's what this is for so that was a nice discovery <laughs> um, I get a lot of great comments on dude you don't even know what you're doing your sanding sucks you're you're not using your tools correctly and it's kind of funny because my day job I'm a foot and ankle surgeon and you know I've been trained to, to an inch of my life uh, to do things perfectly and exact and there's no room for error, you know, it's, an, it's, it's this thing you, you're trained to death to do. And in this art world, I've decided to just wing it, <laughs> try to make things up, have fun. I have found that uh, if you follow too many rules, you start, you miss opportunities, you miss innovation. Okay, so if you look right here, my tenon slipped, totally got off center. And so thankfully it was... It actually wasn't a pre-made tenon. The wood block was a little bit bigger than it needed to be. And so I was able to still make it work um, and get it dead center. It was a pain in the butt having to turn it and get it center, but you know, it worked out fine. Total Boat has been gracious enough to donate epoxy to my projects. When I started this one, I hadn't received uh, my first bigger shipment from them. So this isn't actually total boat epoxy, but um, all of my future ones will be. And I do use their finish. Uh, you'll see at the end here on one of these projects. But I'll have, I'll have a link in my description. You can get uh, a discount at their website if you f use my uh, discount code. But I thank you, big thank you to the Total Boat people. Um, Epoxy is not exactly cheap, and this this uh, charity hobby of mine was getting to be a little expensive, and my wife was sure happy to see that I wasn't going to blow a couple hundred bucks in epoxy every month. I told her it's either this or I'm going to a therapist, so it's worked that great. <laughs> There's something about doing wood turning and something's whizzing around at a thousand RPMs. You don't have a lot of time to think about all the issues in your life. And it's kind of a nice space to just chill and create something. And I've been fortunate enough to be able to do this to support kids out there fighting child sex trafficking. Everything I do, uh, the exposure we're trying to get is for Operation Underground Railroad. You can find them at OURrescue.org. Um, you can go directly to their site, make donations, volunteer. They go all around the world fighting child sex rings, breaking up uh, these pedophile rings. Uh, they do an awesome job. Just in the month of January, they were involved in, I, I forget, 10 to 20 different projects and, and rescued a whole bunch of kids. So they're very productive, very active. There are other groups like them. Uh, this is the one I'm more familiar with. Uh, and uh, they, they keep everything above the table, all their financials and everything is published on their website. So they don't do, they don't mess around a whole lot. Uh, they, they take care of money, treat it sacred and, and, and produce a lot of good results. So they've got my support. I know somebody out there is looking at this going, dude, why didn't you use silicone uh, mold release so you, you're not destroying your, your mold? And that would be an excellent question. <laughs> I, I just forgot again. Um, now right here I discovered, if you look close, there was a, a crack, not a crack, a, a place where the air did not escape out of the center of my thing. So my my plan failed and it didn't get rid of all the air underneath. There weren't enough cracks in the, in the wood to get rid of the bubbles. So I had to do a second pour and that was fine. Uh, a couple of things I'm discovering Stir that epoxy super slow 
this is sped up so it looks like I'm going crazy, but I went really slow on this and get the deep set, slow curing epoxy. Um, it sure helps with bubbles. Um, it's made a difference for my projects. Okay, uh, here you're gonna see that I do remember to use my silicone mold release <laughs> stuff. Um, I don't know if this is good or not, but here's the one I used. Um, I'm gonna use a metal bowl here as uh, my mold. And it worked out great. So whoever it was that suggested that, I think a few people told me, hey, you big idiot, there's better things out there and it worked out great. So keep the suggestions coming. <clears throat> Add a little weight there so it'd sink in. So here's me, at first that thing was stuck big time, but a few taps of the hammer and it popped right out. Uh, came out nice and clean. So sometimes I've got a real specific plan on my projects. Uh, sometimes I just have a vague idea. Sometimes I don't even care. I'm just having fun. Uh, I was going to go initially for like a wavy ripple effect. And then I started thinking about, okay, what if you want to have different rings of food like M&M's, Skittles, and whatever. Maybe you can fill the center with guac and put chips on the outside and sauce on the really far outside ring. Who knows? Whatever. That's just where we ended up. It's turned into a bowl slash platter thing. And uh, I was actually pretty happy with it. So the uh, patient of mine that donated this wood, um, I, she said, why don't you make two bowls all by one? And then you can sell the other one. So the other one's for sale at art4our.org. And she bought this one, this this epoxy one. She donated 250 bucks to the uh, Operation Underground Railroad cause, which was uh, a very generous donation. Thank you very much. If you're listening, you know who you are. I guess I'd say the name, but we're dealing with HIPAA laws there as well. <laughs> but thank you. Many of my patients have been super generous. Um, I'm, I'm kind of this weirdo that uses his uh, medical office as a display shop for his weird projects and people have seen why I'm doing it and have bought things and have been very supportive and, and uh, very understanding of their, their doctor's psychosis. <laughs> So here's me battling my off-center tenon a little bit. Try to save these so I don't have to go through so much wood. Um, so I, that's why I didn't destroy this thing. I kept most of it so I could use it again later. Tell you what, these carbide tips, they are awesome for getting into nooks and crannies uh, where you don't want to get a lot of catches. I do a lot of my shopping at uh, Woodcraft. There's a store here in Utah and they've got everything you need for wood turning. So again, I'm not sure what type of wood this is. It wasn't really spalted, but it, I think it was pre-stained and that stain sunk way in there. So you can see some spots that have no color, others that do. Um, turned out really cool, I thought. If you're not familiar with the word spalted means, that means uh, fungus or mold has gotten into the, the grain of the wood and grown through it, giving it really cool colors. Um, I've got some, some wood in future projects coming up that looks like it's gonna be really cool. All right, this, is, this one's for all you sanding naysayers out there. I swear I can't post a project without being given a hard time on my sanding techniques. And I'm probably still gonna get it <laughs> on this one, but, uh, I finally have a full system where I'm going from 60 grit um, all the way up to like 4,000. Um, I get up to about 400 and then uh, I've got these sponge wet sanding uh, squares that uh, take you up to the higher grits and it, it works really well. Resin is hard to sand. It is an incredibly hard to get it perfect. Um, but I, I think this system is going to work out great.
I like using the belt sander to finish out the bottom uh, just so I can save the tenon. Uh, kind of pick your poison, either destroy a ton of wood and get a perfect finish or pop your tenon off, save it for another project. Okay, so here we're doing here we're doing a, a comparison on these two, two brothers project, um, the fraternal twins. The one on the right's getting the teak oil treatment, which is my favorite. It tends to stabilize really dry or wet wood, and the oil preserves the wood well. You have to do a number of coats to get a good shiny finish, but it's not bad. And on the left, you're getting the uh, total boat treatment uh, with their clear, uh, I believe it's a poly finish. And they both turned out really well. I'm still trying to figure out how to use resin or polyurethane type finishes and not get streaks. Um, here I just gave up and rubbed it down to a very thin layer so that it was it was clear. But I see some of these people doing this super shiny, glossy finish, and I just need to do some research and figure out how to do that. So if you have suggestions on how to apply it and not let it drip and still get a super glossy finish, let me know. So here's a finished product. I loved how these turned out. Thank you for your donation, uh, oh patient of mine, and um, look forward to future projects. Thank you for your support. Of course, we need you to subscribe, share, make a donation. Um, go to artforour.org. Give us some support there. There's a link. Any of links you see to Amazon on my projects, all of that raises money for OUR. Um, so any support you can give would be fantastic.